People of Reddit, have you ever had a ghost cryptid alien encounter? Anything in the realm of the unexplained? If so, what's your story? Episode 2 After discovering witchcraft and doing spells from the Necronomicon spellbook, I noticed a small eyeball on a stalk thing, coming out of my ceiling above my coat rack in my room. Knowing something like this was a possibility after what I had done, I never really got close to it and just ignored it. Nobody else ever noticed it either. After moving out of my dad's house and a hasty unrelated incident, I still wonder what happened to it. Never seen any crazy crap like that before, and I didn't want anyone to think I was crazy, and I didn't want to believe that thing was real. True story. Be careful what you wish for. Okay, people usually think I'm full of shit when I share this, but it's honestly got to the point where my whole mindset is, take it as you will. I lived it you didn't. With that out of the way, here goes nothing. My sister is a year and a half younger than me, and a cancer survivor. During this period in our lives, she was still undergoing chemotherapy treatments, and we needed it to be as close as possible to the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. So, we end up finding a reasonable rental in Lansdowne, Pennsylvania. The neighborhood was quiet, our neighbors were pretty nice, and from what I could remember, at least on the surface, the house we were staying in was quite nice. Now, aside from Casper, I didn't really know what a ghost was at the time. I was maybe seven years old. We were there maybe a month when some of the experiences occurred. In order to pay my sister's medical bills, my mother took a job as a truck driver. She could be a waste three to four days at a time, and during those periods, she would get my cousin to stay at the house in order to babysit. It was during one of these periods our first paranormal experience happened. My mom was working for Toys R Us. She had to haul a load from Pennsylvania to Kentucky. There's a good chance she wouldn't be back until sometime the next day, and so my cousin stepped in. Now it wasn't uncommon for her to be on the phone with her boyfriend or one of her other friends and completely lose track of time. Now it's August, my room is freezing, and I'm having a hard time trying to sleep. As I'm lying there debating whether or not it was worth catching shit for being up well past my bedtime, I hear whispering. Kind of like a muffled conversation between two people. I figured, okay, she's on the phone with her boyfriend. If I sneak into the living room to check the AC dial, she won't notice me as long as I'm quiet. So, I head downstairs as quickly and as quietly as my little legs could carry me. I checked the air conditioner, and it was set to 73 degrees. My mom left it on that setting when she went out the door, and it had not been changed. On my way back to my room, I peered into the parlor to find my cousin fast asleep on my mom's day bed. Judging by how hard she was snoring and the fact that the sun was nowhere near her, she could not have been having a conversation when I heard it. I went back to my room and just brushed the whole thing off as my mind playing tricks on me. I attempt to go back to sleep, and then the muffled conversation is still going on. So, I get up and look at my window, and aside from a couple of stray cats in the neighbor's yard, no other signs of life, let alone human. This muffled conversation carried on until the sunlight started to breach the horizon. I got zero sleep that night, and I dragged it all the next day. I was so tired that I ended up falling asleep standing up at one point. I never told my cousin all of the details as to why I was so tired just that I couldn't sleep. She babied me majority of the day because she figured maybe I was coming down with something. When my mom came in the door later on that night, she clued her in on the fact that I might have been sick, and we had to be careful with me around my sister due to her compromised immune system. I told my mother everything in detail because something inside me told me she would take me seriously. She told me to go to sleep down on the daybed just to be on the safe side. She slept in my room that night, the next morning, she told me she was going to get up and yell at me because she thought I was messing around with the air conditioning unit and had somehow turned on the heat. When she got up to check the AC as I'd done the previous night, there it sat at 73, completely untouched. She was up opening up my vents, looking for clogs or obstructions of any kind only to find nothing. The vents were squeaky clean, and according to her, my room was well over 90 degrees. Mom figured there was something wrong with the unit itself, and until our landlord came by to repair it, the parlor was my makeshift bedroom. My cousin would sleep in my mom's room to that point forward. It took a few weeks, but the landlord finally came by to give the unit a look, and he could find nothing wrong. As it turns out, the guy installed HVAC for a living, and all of the vents were practically brand new. He couldn't make heads or tails of the whole situation. Eventually, autumn came, and my room was mine once again. It appeared the whacked out temperature in my room was a thing of the past. I no longer heard the whispered conversations. But that wasn't the end of things. Outside of my window was this old, rusted fire escape. At random times in the night, I would hear the ladder come down, and people start climbing up and down, 
there was only one problem with this. The ladder was so badly damaged due to age, it had been removed, thus rendering the fire escape practically useless. One night I'd just gotten sick of it, so I made my way over to the window to get visual confirmation as to what may have been causing all of the noise. I distinctly remember seeing a solid grey figure resembling a 13-year-old boy dressed in clothing from the 1930s, 1940s era. I could see right through him. He had a look on his face that could only be described as one of distress. He looks right at me, and I lock up. I couldn't scream, I couldn't breathe, I was so paralyzed with fear, I urinated on myself. He stared at me for what seemed like an eternity, before we sprang away like smoke off of the end of a cigarette. I felt myself regain movement, and I collapsed in a heap on the ground screaming for my mother. She picked me up, and from what she told me when we revisited our short time in Lansdowne, I was pale as a sheet and shaking uncontrollably. She said that the only other time she had seen such pure fear on my face was when I witnessed my neighbor's son almost killed by a hit and run drunk driver a few years later. She had a few experiences of her own, and these led up to us moving out. She told me a man's boot print kept showing up on the carpet outside of her bedroom door. She described it as being a dark rusty color. She cleaned it several times, and it just kept coming back like she'd done it nothing at all. Between me seeing the ghost boy and a particularly disturbing discovery she found in a locked off storage area under the cellar steps, it was time to get the hell out of Dodge, I really had to press the issue in order for her to tell me what she found. I was 28 or 29 years old when she finally opened up about the whole thing. The medicine cabinet in her bathroom had been loose for some time. Rather than bother the landlord about coming over to fix it, she said that she would take it upon herself and see if he would just write it off on the next month's rent. She took the wobbly medicine cabinet off of her bathroom wall, and she found a skeleton key inside an old medicine bottle. She was curious to see what it went to, and she inspected all the doors in the house. We didn't have an attic, so she immediately ruled that out. She walked around the whole house only to find all the doors had been replaced, and there was no way that he would have fit anything. And then it occurred to her she hadn't checked the cellar. She grabbed the maglight out of her truck and proceeded to walk around in a cellar until she came upon that door under the steps. She opened it up and looked around inside with her flashlight, and at first, nothing seemed out of the ordinary. There was a bunch of old toys from the late 60s and early 70s in there. As curiosity got the better of her, she decided to crawl into this tiny room under the stairs, and when she got to the corner of the room, she found what she described as one of the most disturbing things she ever saw. No less than 10 cat carcasses were stacked neatly in a corner, all of them were headless. An old dull and rusty knife with a curved, serrated blade sat next to them. When she turned around to get out of the room, there were a bunch of cat skulls stacked on top of each other in a pyramid-like fashion. The words all for you were scrawled into the wall, presumably by the same blade. She made the conscious decision to move us out that day. We were packed and ready to go by the weekend. Again, I've only told this to maybe three people, and they always take it as me trying to scare them. I assure you, this isn't some campfire tale. Although I've never experienced anything since this, I still remember it like it was yesterday. So, there's my weird, creepy, paranormal experience. Take it as you will. I bought a house that was a foreclosure in Alaska. When we moved in, the house just had weird vibes, nothing too crazy, but it just felt off. We got it for a steal, so we decided that we just needed to get used to a new place. It wasn't long before my then three-year-old son started asking us to tell the man in the hat he can't look at me anymore and asked us about why daddy has red eyes. Turns out he was seeing someone standing in his doorway at night and staring at him. Later on, we would start hearing conversations from the office downstairs. When we would investigate, the voices would stop as soon as the door opened. The conversations were more murmur than actual words but had inflection that made you believe that two people were having a heated argument. When we would sit in the basement, I had converted it into a theater, we would hear walking upstairs and more voices. Doors would slam, and one snowy day, we heard the door to the garage slam, steps on the landing, and then nothing. I went to investigate with my pistol in hand as our neighbors were suspected heroin dealers and found a wet boot print on the landing. Just one. All the doors were locked, and the garage was dry. The kicker was the night my wife got grabbed. I was sitting in the living room, and she had gone to bed to read. I heard her scream and reacted as if she thought I had snuck into the room and grabbed her thigh. It's not unlike me to do such a thing, however, when she heard the lazy boy recliner move and me scramble toward her, she knew she had been grabbed. We found writing in the walls during construction, and the writing consisted of full daily journal entries from when the house was built. Personal entries, documenting what happened on the specific day. Years ago, back in my ma's house, 
Me and my brother were chilling up in the room and heard voices coming from the back of the TV set, not very loud, and it was hard to distinguish what was being said. It was like lots of people talking in a bar. We shat ourselves and went into the neighbor's house. Ha ha, it was scary shit. Although I am skeptical today, I had a lot of paranormal experiences when I was a kid. It was very common to me to see ghosts, full-body people, dressed in detail, only with their face blurred, vestal presences, like if they were cat or dog spirits, and voices, in the radio, TV, other electronic apparels. I had also some physical episodes where something would scratch or punch doors and walls in my house. This all went away when I turned 14 and moved to another city. Found out years later, after my grandma died and my mother looked for help in a spiritual center, that my family was considered a very receptive family for spirits and ghosts. They actually offered me a spot in their religion, saying that they could train me to become active again, which I gladly deny. However, the strongest experience I had was not related to ghosts but with a UFO. It was a simple small bright spot in the sky, moving in ways that no conventional spacecraft could, especially where I live, because I know our government does not have an interest in researching such things. Also, the spirits and ghosts would happen only when I was alone, but at least three family members also saw the same thing, so I am pretty convinced I saw something really unusual that day. Alright, so me and a friend, sorry, a friend and I, had been playing with airsoft guns before neighbors thought that a teen running around with a replica or a real weapon was a cause for concern, and we were playing like usual, imagining zombies everywhere, last stand, etc. After we start to walk back from around our play area, we turn around and see this disfigured thing in a white cloak, either an alien with a hood or a KKK member with scoliosis. It was walking down a trail which my friend and I never knew about. I mean, it was a walk through time. Of course, we followed the thing and went down the trail. We saw broken signs from the 70s with a hard plastic, an old vacuum, and a car from the 40s all rusted out. We couldn't find the thing and booked out of there. Almost everyone in my family, to my knowledge, has had at least one paranormal interaction. I don't remember my first, but it was one of the first nights my mom brought me home from the hospital after I was born. An uncle she'd been close to who lived in the Philippines had recently passed away, so he never got to meet me in person. My mom says she woke up in the middle of the night to me making some baby noises and swears she saw her uncle standing over me. She said he was blue, wispy, and was playing with me with the biggest, sweetest smile on his face. She says he looked up at her as if to say thank you, and they locked eyes for a few seconds before he disappeared. I always got a strange feeling in that old house that my grandparents built, like I was being watched or followed. It didn't always feel like the same energy either, and now that I've moved out, I haven't felt it in any of my apartments. Every time I go back to visit, the feelings come back though. There's just something in that house that likes to follow me. Nobody has ever died in it, but after my grandparents had it built, they had a priest come to bless it, you know the way Catholics do. My grandparents, mom, aunt, and uncle have all told me the same story on separate occasions. Apparently, the priest blessed each room before going to the front door to expel any lingering spirits or evils. None of the windows or other doors to the house were open besides the front door, but when he gave the final blessings, a huge gust of wind came from inside the house and knocked the priest over right on the front porch. I've had a few experiences. One of the first ones I've had was when I was around 9 years old. There was this one antique auction store that my mom used to go to, and on that day, I was fucking around with some antique Ouija board, looking through the little triangle I hold thing and looking at the alphabet on the board, trying to figure out what the fuck it was, and how you were supposed to play I thought it was some board game, before my mother pulled me away from it and took us home after she was done doing her business at the store. Later that night, I started seeing an old man wearing what looked like a 1920s train conductor's outfit with a blue cap and jacket, watching my brother and me, we shared a room, just standing there from the doorway as I was trying to sleep in my bed. We both freaked out ran to room folks room scared after he disappears, tell them, there's a ghost in our room and proceed to describe him in detail, and they check my room and in nothing. Throughout the week, I'd see the old man every time I'd try to go to sleep, sometimes as I'm about to sleep, other times when I was wide awake, but most of the time when it was nighttime. There was also an old woman in an old-fashioned, modest dress that would sometimes show up. I remembered for the first week, or so, my brother and I were terrified, and we told our folks every time we saw the old train conductor and the old lady who we felt was his wife. Eventually, I just kind of accepted their presence in the house as a kind of fascinating phenomenon in my life, although a couple of times I woke up scared shitless, and I saw either both together or just one of them just standing there, watching. 
I never remembered either of them doing anything else. They never said anything. They never moved, just watched. I remembered that one day after a month of constant visitations and sightings, they stopped showing up completely. Their haunting just ended abruptly. I never saw any of them again, but I remembered waiting for two days, always keeping an eye out every night, and nothing, before asking my brother if he saw them anymore and told me the same thing, that he didn't see either of them for a couple days. We informed our folks about this later that day that we hadn't seen the train conductor or his wife for a couple days. My dad made jokes about it like always, but my mom, I remembered, was quiet. I remembered a couple years later learning what an Ouija board was, and I then remembered apologizing to my mom, telling her that I felt guilty, since I thought that it had to have been that time when I was playing around with the game board and piece a couple years earlier in the auction. Since I knew that an Ouija board was meant for contacting spirits, I thought that I had somehow brought a ghost with us that day. It was then, that my mom told me a story about that day. She had bought an old, framed picture of a man in a train conductor's uniform and his wife posing in front of a train in a train station which she thought was a beautiful picture. She put it into the storage room to try to figure out eventually a good place to put it in the house. It was that same night that my brother and I started complaining about the train conductor and his wife showing up in our room. What freaked her out about it was how accurately we described both the man and the woman in the picture since there was no way we could have seen the picture as it was covered, and we really didn't, and locked in the storage room, plus she had seen some strange things happening in the house but didn't ever tell me what happened. After a month of us complaining to her about the ghosts, she decided to donate the picture back to the auction place, and that day we stopped complaining about it, before finally, we told her that we hadn't seen the ghosts anymore.